Crash Course Live is presented by Smash It Demolition Derby, who host Bash for Cash, Blizzard Bash, and Capital City Carnage. Online at smashitderby.com. And Stirring Dirt Racing, host of May Mania's team show at the Golden Spike Arena in Ogden, Utah. Online at stirringdirtracing.com. Reckless Abandoned Derby Apparel and Derby Inc. Magazine. This is the Crash Course Demolition Derby Podcast, recorded live at the FigureLakes1.com studios in downtown Seneca Falls, New York. And now your host, Chris Marquardt. He turned into good, Andy Wolf. Good, good afternoon. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to this edition of the Crash Course Demolition Derby Podcast. <laughs> Flying out of the block, out of the blocks right away. Oh, man, we've got a couple guests here in studio with us. Mark Benjamin uh, making an appearance here in studio. We, we, we were supposed to have Brett Relier up here. I was going to be more diplomatic about it, but as you can hear, Mark took care of that for us. <laughs> Marcella Benjamin making her, uh, her long-awaited debut on the show. Brian, of course, making the trip in as well. Excited to have everybody along for the ride. Uh, we're going to be talking with Kyle Baker a little bit about uh, his run down in Maryland. We're also going to be catching up. Um, uh, on a couple of the projects that are going on with the Realistic Derby project, um, some interesting things happening along those lines. I guess maybe we'll we'll uh, we'll dive into that stuff to start with. Uh, Realistic Derby project, uh, Jesse Myers program, with uh, everybody just calls it the video game. It's like Kleenex. Everybody knows what we're talking about. It's a video, video game, game, yeah, no doubt. It's uh, BMNG Dot Drive and the Realistic Derby project have put together a program uh, for suicide awareness and prevention which is really, really cool. They teamed up with Corey Beal at Black Flag. Uh, we've got information on the show post. Um, it's, it's a really, really neat program that they've put together. If you donate up to 10 bucks, you get a particular skin, and then if you donate a little bit more, uh, you get uh, a different version of the skin, and then if you donate more than 50 bucks, um, you get a, a black, white, and gold skin that uh, um, is themed for uh, the suicide prevention, et, et cetera, um, the awareness program. You can uh, find out more about it in the show post itself. Um, you can send donations to jessemyers94 at gmail.com. Um, he's got all sorts of statistics up there that we shared as well. It's on the Patreon page. Um, this event is put on uh, in memory of Cassidy Joy and a longtime friend of Jesse who uh, passed away uh, 10 years ago um, on the day that, that, that all this stuff was posted. He's got all sorts of statistics and stuff shared on there. We've got the link. Make sure you jump on there, even if you don't want the skin. I mean, there's, there's really no wrong way to go about this. Um, uh, Jason Oldfield, one of the co-hosts on the final round drag racing show, uh, he had one of his daughter's friends. Um, she took her life. She was 12 or 13 years old. And she was trying to call for help. She called dad. Dad was pumping gas down the road from the house. And the phone was on the front seat. Missed the phone call and came home and she'd hung herself in the basement. So it's that type of, uh, of just this, this hairline thing where, where sometimes it's just as simple as going and asking somebody, are you okay? Uh, are things all right? And, and you can turn somebody's life around. And it's, it's the, the phone number for the suicide awareness line is posted in... Uh, in the text as well, 1-800-273-TALK-8255. Uh, Eddie Stop 22, Eddie Pallock, we, we talked to him a couple weeks ago when his, when his boy got a win down there in uh, Roaring Knob. He's very active with it specifically for the um, suicide prevention among veterans with the, the, the Stop 22 campaign. He's active with that as well. Um, if anybody ever needs anything, I know all of us are here. I know the, the mental health stuff is, is something that's pretty important to, to Brian, often posting about things like that. So I thought that this would be a campaign that we could very easily jump behind. Yeah, definitely. You know, especially with all the stuff that's going on now. I mean, uh, you know, I think everybody is just really yearning for some normalcy. And unfortunately, the way the numbers are going, um, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Um, but yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm very, uh, very grateful, very uh, thankful for the, uh, the, the the veterans. And, you know, they, they have it very bad. Um, you know, 22 a day on average are killing themselves. And it's not just, you know, um, guys that have been to, to uh, you know, Afghanistan or Iraq. I mean, it's it's veterans, you know, as far back as, you know, Vietnam and Korea. They're, they're still committing suicide. So, um, and, and, and it's, you know, but, but suicide also in uh, – you know, in, in every, in, you know, for non-veterans. I mean, I can remember when I was a junior in high school, I went to Romulus. 
in uh, here in upstate New York. Mostly Metropolis, Romulus. Yeah, and uh, my my class was big. Uh, we had forty six kids in our class. Um, so when I say that you knew everybody, you knew everybody from seventh grade to, to your senior. You know, you you knew everybody. Um, my junior uh, senior committed suicide. Mm-hmm. Um, and you want to talk about just something that rocks. You know, I mean, a, a town like that is it's just it's terrible. Um, you know, it's so many people. Um, you know, I, I've known so many people over the years that it's, uh, that have unfortunately taken that route. And it is. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's just somebody, you know, there to talk to or somebody to, to you know, know, to know you have support. Um, you know, I've had some crazy stuff happen at work. And, uh, you know, I've had friends that, uh, you know, that have been there for me and, and helped to talk things out. And uh, it's just terrible. You know, it's it's. You know, it, it, it takes away one person's pain, but it just it moves it on to everybody else. So. Right. I mean, one of the one of the things that sticks with me every time I hear about suicide, our community has been affected by it um, in many different ways. The, the one that was probably the closest to home for me that, that's <clears throat> jumping out right now uh, was Roger, Roger Matthews. Oh, yeah. And, and that, that, that awful situation that just went from bad to worse in a heartbeat and, and certainly thinking of, of him now as, as this topic came to us. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we had, a, we, had a, we had a little boy in school. Um, and I work in a third and fourth grade classroom, and there was a lot of times where this kid would just get upset because he missed his dad, and and his dad didn't take his own life. He was riding the motorcycle and ended up crashing into a a, a bridge abutment and and passed that way. But just thinking about how that's an accident, then you pair that, you try to try to like rectify that against something that's that's intentional but equally preventable, you know, mm-hmm. and and it's just like. Uh, we had a friend up in Canada that, we, that was having a hard time too that we talked to quite a bit. Um, he's, he's right now doing better, which is good, but you know, nobody, uh, we don't want anybody to feel alone. We always talk no. so often about how the Demolition Derby community is a family and they band together. And, oh, absolutely. And, uh, I don't think you know, that's, I mean, remember a few years ago there was uh, um, two in Waterloo in like six months. One, one kid had just graduated high school right. and was a right. freshman in college. And Jim then. Clark's boy. And that Jim Clark's boy, um, he was later. He was in the spring, um, but the same thing with the, uh, you know, the, the 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 one young man that committed suicide. He did it week before Christmas, I yeah. think it was, and I believe he had called his dad and said, "Hey, Dad, can we get together and talk?" And his dad unfortunately had some business. He's like, "Yeah, when we get home, when I get home, we'll be able to talk, bud." And got home and it was too late. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, my, you know, my, my messenger is always on. My phone's always with me. I, you know, I'll, I'll talk to anybody, you know, if, if, if I can help, I will help. Yeah. Chad Dunlap in the chat right now, a veteran I'm saying he's, he's been having a hard time. So, I mean, chat just lit up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's always good. We're going to put that up a couple of times periodically through the show. Um, we we'll Kyle Baker waiting in the wings. Uh, Kyle, who went out there and won the compact side of the equation, down there at uh, the Buried Alive Derby in Cumberland, Maryland. Uh, we also want to welcome a new show partner. Uh, looking forward to their show coming up in April. Still need to finalize the details, but uh, Dead Man Derby and Buried Alive going to be leveraging uh, some of our reach here on the Crash Course to promote their show. So we appreciate cool. TJ joining on board and, and being part of that. Kyle, able to pull down the wind down there at Buried Alive. Kyle, you can hear him in the background. How are you doing tonight? We're, we're doing okay. Sober start to the show, but we can shift gears and, and find something a little bit uh, happier, uh, even though we're a week delayed and I didn't realize you had picked up the win. Congratulations. Uh, however, um, however late on that, man, tell me a little bit about, uh, tell me a little bit about the run down there and, and how everything went in um, Cumberland. Uh, a couple spots come up and 
So last week when oh sorry, go ahead. Um, last week when TJ was on, he uh, he said that the the, the pace and the uh, the compact heat was uh, one of the fastest, if not the fastest he'd ever seen. What what did it feel like when you were on the track? Um, now, when it when it came down to the end, you and the gentleman that finished second ended up backing up a long ways apart and making a big hit at the end. Uh, what what was that like? Yeah, that's cool. I haven't seen it yet, but I've, I had a couple guys tell me about it, and uh, they they said it was pretty pretty hard looking hit. So that's awesome, though. It's, uh, that's I mean, if if you're gonna tow that way, you might as well bring home the big check. I mean, that kind of makes it all worth it. I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> now I, I don't know I mean I, I've been to a few derbies in uh, in Ohio and uh, I don't know if the term underbuilt ever actually you know goes with a guy that, that builds in Ohio I mean you guys uh, you know there, there's a reason it's called an Ohio build I mean you know you, they, they, uh, they do a nice job of building stuff out there Yeah, there's uh, there's there's definitely something about Ohio. There's there's a lot of amazing drivers and builders out there, right there. Does this? Didn't you, you, you ran an Imperial last year, didn't you? The Imperial versus the World event? No, I didn't. No. Thank you. 
is is there anything on the radar for next year aside of a TJ show in April? That's that three man team show is the one that used to be at Sandusky, right? The, the Erie County Fairgrounds, and it got moved. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's a. Very much so. It's a pretty good show. I think I remember seeing Chet Dyer win a couple of shows out there. Jeff uh, Jeff Schweinfurth brought a uh, round back wagon there. They had big gator jaws on it really? yeah that was a that was a neat looking car and then uh, awesome. we remember remember p47 i don't remember the driver but remember that it, it was always an amc it was always black it had red numbers on it p47 at mm. bash for cash oh bash for cash yeah i think i do yeah, yeah. that he runs there on gotcha. a regular basis there's a couple other guys that we've seen at bash for cash that have just nasty suicides and imperials and stuff it's it, it that was back when they had the county fair show and then you he broke into the bill broke into the county fair or excuse me into the the team format and that was where uh remington and those guys went when he had the doors pushed in on the diplomat all the way training tunnel mm -hmm. they don't do yeah. they don't goof around there it's a <laughs> it's a pretty fun show yep hey, no protector, I believe it's called yeah you know, so 80s ambulance on call <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I tell you, you guys, if, if you get the chance to go to DJ show, um, it, it's a very warm feeling as a derby driver to uh, experience it. It was something, I've been, like I said, to a lot of different shows, a lot of different promoters, and he just had some awesome twists that um, it just made you feel a whole. And, and he said he's got more of them planned for next time. Again, the, the next show is coming up in April. The <laughs> The official announcement is still forthcoming on that. You can tune into TJ McCulloch's Facebook page or jump online to the uh, Dead Man Derby Productions. And he made it a point. It's a production. Good. It's entertainment for everybody, not just a promotership. So, uh, yeah, so yeah. who knows what those who's, who knows what tricks are going to be forthcoming? Um, and right now, the plan is still for it to be called No Mercy. WWE hasn't gotten a hold of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sleeping giant. Right on. Well, Kyle, man, I uh, wanted to give credit where it was due. Congratulations on the win. Certainly it, uh, it wasn't an easy one to come away with, but, but finishing with a bang and, and sort of stealing a little bit of the show, certainly nothing to, uh, nothing to be disappointed about and, and puts in motion some good momentum for the next time out down there. Absolutely. Yep, I appreciate you guys having me. Anybody that you wanted to make mention of before we let you go? Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on and hanging out with us for a little while. Congratulations on the win. All right, thanks, guys. Have a good day. Have a good one. We'll talk to you soon. So that, uh, that serves as our jumping off point. And another individual who can say that their father got them into it, Marcella Benjamin. Now, the last time we tried to put this together, she ended up getting backed into on the highway. Oh. It, didn't, it didn't go so well. But <laughs> Ouch. the weather was much better this time. But on the flip side, there's not nearly as much to talk about. So she <laughs> said, that, so I don't know how it's going to go. So, so home from, home from Cobleskill, mm -hmm. all sorts of derby stuff, hopefully next year, because this year it didn't pan out. Yeah. Where's, the, where's the season at? How are things going to go? Uh, pretty good. Um, I think we've got well, a few Vicks that we plan on running. Um, Dad's gonna leave you hanging. Dad's, Dad's not gonna. <laughs> Dad's, Dad's not gonna share any of the stuff that just happened to wander up from the Carolinas. Huh? We're uh, we we could touch on her uh, her foray into enduro racing. Okay. I'm sure that would be an oh, interesting yeah. talk. We're, we're gonna get there. But oh, okay. We're we're gonna, we're gonna get there. No, um, she's got a she's got a really nice 98.02 Vic I built for, her and uh, 
but we just didn't get a chance to run it this year. Um, of course, that come from Nick Nicastro. Nick hooked her up with that. So, yeah, Nick is uh, Nick moved to, to North Carolina and continued his uh, his car collecting. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, for a little while, he wasn't doing that down there. He was just leaving them cars alone. That I, I think it, you know, he decided he had to get back after it. But um, no, we've seen uh, we've seen Marcel have a lot of success in youth derbies. I think what do you got? Three, four wins, youth yep. shows. Yep. Driving a black number three. I don't know where that idea came from, but uh, um, third generation Benjamin driver, of course, uh, Harold and Betty who have won, I couldn't even venture to guess how many shows, and of course, you know, Dad, Mark. Um, so at what age did you start badgering Dad about wanting to run? Oh, Do you remember? Young, like eight or nine. And Dad's like, oh, you're just too young, kid. You're too young. So I was 11 when I ran my first youth derby at Black Rock Speedway in a black Lumina, number three. And uh, he actually... No. The Lumina was the second one. The first one was a Buick. Oh, yeah, yeah. The first one was a Buick. Yep, I was 11 years old. I was just a little pip Of course, we put on the sheet that she was 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Funny, Mark just mentioned that he was 14 running derbies when he started. So, yeah. of course, that was probably at a full-size yeah, was a Chevy wagon. wagon. I was going to say. Chevy wagon. Chevy takes down the country. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some of us start out, you know, junk, and then there's Mark that starts out in a fresh 76 ton of country wagon. Yeah, so my parents always had good stuff. So, I mean, I just. Oh, yeah, they did and it was just crazy because my dad would just let me go out back and say, oh, I just want to run that one. All right. That doesn't work that way no more. She goes out back and says, hey, I want to run that one. I was like, nah, you're going to run that one. <laughs> <laughs> you better not let, her, let Grandpa hear that because I know he doesn't say no to her very often. Back then, though, when I was 14, 15 years old, though, there was, you know, you go out back there, there'd be, I kid you not, there'd be 50 shockers sitting there. Yeah. And, and there'd be a row of 20 Chevy wagons, you know. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Been there, Brian. oh yeah, we've seen pictures. We, uh, it's funny when, uh, like we we were talking before the show started, and uh, you know I, I heard Mark Benjamin run up here for so long that I thought he was you know way older, and he's you know fourteen days older. So um, when Mark when Mark first started coming up here running, he was very sure of himself. And he wasn't afraid to voice that sureness and the, the confidence. So uh, we kind of started on a bumpy road, but um, you know we got to know Mark very well, and uh, you know he invited us down and showed us. I mean, this was towards the end. His parents weren't running as much, and um, they still had a lot of nice stuff, but not like they did back in the heyday. But he showed us pictures of just rows of Chryslers and Chevys, and oh my gosh! And uh, you know we watched a bunch of old tapes down there, but. You know, I, I remember, I remember, you know, him saying that he was going to put Marcel in a car, and I'm like, man, I, I don't know. It's, and she, like, she was young, but you know, she, she's definitely a, a derbier. Um, and, and truth be known, I think that Betty is probably the best driver in the family because she doesn't, she never got mad on the track. Now, Harold and Mark had a little bit of a temper, and on occasion may have, you know, used the car up, but Betty was. She was even keeled and she was good. Um, My dad has a different opinion of that old even keeled. <laughs> <laughs> well, that 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 might have been you know a bad night, but uh, that was cat and mouse for years. <laughs> but uh, well, she'd tell you what she thought. But you know that that was there was no fans of butt, and she probably still would. I haven't seen Betty in a few years, but I bet she still would. But um, so it's it, it's very cool, um, you know that. Uh, third generation and uh, successful already so I how was it that you actually got into the car i mean decided just nagging and wanted to and stuff like that i mean there had to be some sort of process or conversation that led, led to the point where you finally got into the mm -hmm. buick yeah just seeing my dad always just talk about it and all of his buddies would always talk about it and we would always go all over the place and watch and i was like man i gotta do it. i gotta do what dad does and grandma grandma would always tell me her stories about how she would run and she would win, and I'm like, oh, I want to be just like Grandma, you know. I want to be, I want to be the girl out there that you know, you know, does a good job and has a big family that supports her, and it's just awesome. Mm -hmm. There's a girl out there that does that now. She's pretty successful. Her name's Tiffany. Mm -hmm. She does a lot of winning. Yeah, she, she is uh, okay. She, she's a pretty damn good driver too. So, what uh, what's it like before derby? I mean, do you do you get nervous? Do you get antsy? Do you? Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You're you're just constantly like rolling through your head, like, okay, you know, who who am I gonna? 
go after, you know, who are my buddies out there, and, you know, just... Now, you've run a bunch at your hometown fair, right? You yep. guys, you and your mom and dad have all run a yep. bunch? Yep, for like the past, what, eight, ten years? Well, probably only four for Mark, because every other year he gets banned. <laughs> no, they, no, they, they, they I win never, their role. I they, never had a lot of success at my hometown fair. Am I thinking of I, Bath? Huh? Am I thinking of Bath? Or Shimong. Yeah, I had better luck at Bath than I did Shimong. Yeah. I mean, it was... It was seven or eight years before I actually won my hometown show, and it was actually the busiest show. I mean, there wasn't a lot of competition there. It wasn't like Waterloo where you'd go, and there would be 25 cars to a heat, yeah. you know, and then you had to compete against Brian and Ben. And I wasn't no competition. <laughs> yeah. I got rubbed right over. Yeah. <laughs> One year, me and Brett went up there, and we both had feature spots for Saturday night, and we didn't have to run the heat. So we had fresh cars. He had a Cordoba. I had a Chevy wagon, and... Uh, We'd watch the heats, and we're like, oh, man. Well, Ben and Nick just made the feature. <laughs> the next heat, it was Brian and Harry Cop. Like, oh, man. There's four. <laughs> There's only two of us. Well, it's got to get better. Yeah. Well, then it was Donnie Hartzell and yeah, there's, there's Jake a... Doyle. Oh, man, there's six of them. Well, it's only like a 12 or 14 car feature. That wasn't good for us in the feature. That was <clears throat> that was hard. Chris, remember uh, Chris Hilkert? He was there. He had a he had a uh, Cordo, but ended up being painted like his was orange and Brett's was like a, a brown or something. Brett yeah. almost won that night. He was because everybody was beating Brett got on you. The third. Yeah, yeah. There was. I had a Chevy wagon, seventy two Chevy wagon. Tell 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 him about when you were backing up with that, yeah. which what you did when you went full track with that wagon. What remember remember what you oh, said about the Harry Chevy wagon? He had a seventy three. <laughs> I had a seventy one or seventy two. Mine was. And uh, I got going down. We were at one end. I was at the other end. He was. And we were back to back. And I start going down the track backwards looking over to see. And I happened to look over at the fans, and I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, it looked like you were out on the highway. Cause the thing was just had wide open. And when we hit back to back, he must have been against the blocks because it was like a stop right now. <laughs> Boom. And all I was thinking of going down the track is I'm going to drive right through the blocks. Well, that didn't happen. <laughs> And when I turned back around, the back bumper was literally almost touching the gas tank in one hit. <laughs> so then Brian Wise made the feature that night. Yep. So it was like 10 on 2, you know, mm -hmm. which, you know, and I, Ben there had a, a shocker. Yep. Um, blue blue uh, Newport, yep. 74 Newport. Yep. And then uh, we hit down the track there, and I get turned around, and then a couple of them guys just wide open, had like, had like that wagon of mine. The, the windshield posts were actually going the other way. You know, the, from yeah. pillar to pillar, the A to B was longer on the top than they were on the bottom. <laughs> the front doors were, and the dry shaft ended up coming out of the front of it. Of course, yeah. we didn't have sliders then. Yeah. That was a hard-hitting feature. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. That was a good time. Was I, didn't, I didn't make it to the track, though. I won the, like, I went out for the Concy, and I had a, an Imperial I'd bought from uh, Phil Giuliano. And in the, in the heat, I can't remember, hung up or something, I don't remember. So I go out in the Concy, and there's like 35 cars on that track for Concy's. And I get down to the end, and there's a car just sitting there, and he's running, so they make me hit him. So I just bump him, and all of a sudden I hear thunk, 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 thunk underneath my car. And I'm like, this isn't good. And I just touched him with the front of my car, crawl underneath. And when you bought a car from Phil, he took everything that could be taken out, he took out literally. Like you got a steering column, and that was about it for interior. And he changed the rear end, and the rear end he'd put in it, the pads on the rear end had rotted and it just let it go like this and it broke the dry shaft mm. so i had a fresh 70 imperial you know that i didn't get to run but it was that was a fun fun uh feature to watch it was there was some <laughs> there was some hitting in that that show but we had a lot of fun down there we really did you guys grew up was a fun track you have to grow up listening to all these stories is there anyone that sticks out to you It's not, it's not much, when I was growing up, it wasn't really the stories that really, you know, lured me in. It was being there watching my dad derby and, and win, and it was just, you know, me being involved after it was all done and over with. You know, he would always give me his trophies, and he's like, all right, you go take it home, go, and I would show everybody at home. It, it, that's the stuff that really stuck with me forever. How old were you when you actually started helping dad in the garage? Um, 14, 15. Dad's kind of looking at you funny now. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true, Dad? 14, 15, she started yeah. helping? 
She was in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's a question I've Breaking never... a window here or whatever. And my dad a... hates broken windows. He's like, oh, you just take them out. Don't break them. <laughs> here's a question I've never asked you. How much work did your mom used to do building cars? Or did your dad build everything and mom just drove? Um, My dad did most of the building. Um, there was a guy that lived next door that came over and he liked to work on cars. So my dad would give him cars and he would go and run. And, um, I always wondered. Yep. So... Yeah, we, uh, when I, it might have been the first time Brett came to, it, 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 just for the, everybody knows, it's Brett's, or it's Mark's fault that Brett really got into Demolition Derby. He, <laughs> uh, they were buddies, and I'm pretty sure Brett or Mark encouraged him to run. But, uh, so they come to Waterloo one year, and it's a Wednesday night. Mark's got a Chevy wagon, and Brett brings a Buick. I don't even know, I didn't, it wasn't a Roadmaster, but it was the old hatchback style, and, the wagon? Yeah. Yeah. It that was, was the Wednesday before the it, Saturday you guys yeah. chunked us. Oh my gosh. So we go or we go out there and Brett was um is mouthy? Is, is is that an okay word to describe Brett back in the day was mouthy? Well he showed up at my house the day of the der- day before the derby with that wagon. He's like, Hey, I wanna take this. <laughs> <laughs> so Brett came in and I don't it might have been the first time I ever met Brett and uh you know, when when the Benjamins pulled in, you always watched because you always knew they were the ones you had to dream about beating. I mean, you weren't, you know, you worried about beating anybody from Waterloo. You knew if they showed up, they were the ones you had to beat. That's just how it was. And uh, so Mark come in, pulling the wagon, and Harold and Betty weren't there. It was just Mark and Brett. And Brett has this Buick wagon. and Yeah, I think it was a Regal wagon. It's like a Malibu wagon. Yeah, but it was like, like a 76 or yeah. 77. And, uh, so we go out, and it was me. And it was I think there was only like five cars in the feature. It was you and you and Brett, me, Chris Hilker, and I think there was one other car. So there's like seven cars on Waterloo. You know, well, the like thing, Waterloo's. yeah, the thing with Waterloo though, you had to get through a heat. If you got through yeah. the heat with a good car, yeah, it was clear sailing in the feature because everything else was junk. Oh I mean, yeah, you know, you junked your stuff in the heat to get to the feature oh, because yeah. of so many cars. So we go out in the, in the heat and. Uh, Chris Hilker and I didn't get along that well, so we, they said go, and he was broad so I, I hit him first, and then at the far end of the track, I see this wagon that I knew was with Mark, and I'm like, well, this guy's getting it. So I hit him probably half, three-quarter track in the passenger doors, just as fast as that Imperial would go. And it was hard enough, like he was up against the guardrail, and it was hard enough to where I hit him and glanced off like that. So I kind of got my bearings, and Mark was up against the inside wall, their guardrail then, and Chris Hooker was hit, hit him in the back end. It was kind of holding him there. And I'm like, oh my god, I've waited this my entire derby career. So I come down through there wide open in this Imperial, and you know me not being a driver, instead of hitting him in the front tire where do something, I hit him in the passengers doors, and I hit him hard. It was it was a cool looking shot, but it doesn't do anything to a car. It got so, me out of my seat. Yeah, well, it did. It knocked him out of his seat, but. And I no sooner hit him, and the next thing I know is I'm on the ground looking up the B pillar, and I'm like, what the? So I look behind me like this, and I swear to God, the front bumper on Brett's car, because Brett, once once I hit Brett, it was on. He followed me down through, and when he hit me, he drove so far into my car, his bumper had bent the speaker tray behind the seat of the car. The, the speaker tray was like this. So I pulled myself up in the car, and I was... I was knocked for a loop, and I sat there for a minute, and then I realized the car was still running, and I'm like, and everything hurt. My head hurt, my back hurt, everything hurt, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to try to run anymore or not, and thankfully, Brett had broke his distributor cap, so he just sat there, so it was Mark and Chris were battling, and uh, (laughs) I finally get loose, and I start kind of going after Mark, and you can see it like on tape, like Mark's coming to hit me, and I'm like, oh, this is going to (laughs) hurt. He ended up winning, and I finished second. But it was, you know, that was that was kind of the beginning of the friendship. And then, you know, they came back Saturday night, and you know, there were some pleasantries exchanged. And um, but like I said, we've you know we've we've become great friends. So, but we've we've there've definitely been a lot of derby over the years, and it was you know it was always fun. It was always a good time. So with all the stories about Waterloo and Seneca County and, and Bath and Shimon, you've been able to run at Bath. You've won there, right? Not bad. Nope, not bad. At Shimon? Yep, Shimon. And then 
have, you haven't had the chance yet to run at Seneca County. Is that something that you want to do at some point with all the success that your grandparents and dad have had there? Yeah, yeah, I most definitely do. I mean, I think I would pretty much run anywhere. I think it's all up to dad. Wherever dad wants to go, we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I was su successful at um, Whitneyville, Whitneyville, Pennsylvania. They run a youth full size down there. And just all the cards fell in, fell in her corner. They, you, what do you mean they all fell in your corner? She, she did good. They, uh, they had cars that, of course, I didn't read the rules. I just showed up with a, a Schmuck County Fair built 76 and paid off. <laughs> and when I got there, I was like, oh, boy. And I said, I actually wanted to talk her out of running. I didn't. Mm -hmm. You actually did. You like, were like, right, right, Marcel, you. you're just, you're, you're underbuilt. Look at these cars. Are you know, you, I mean, because sure you, you have kids that had cars that were very well built but the only thing to beat them is they got stuck yeah you know there was an 03 and up that was built with a full engine cradle swap and a 74 caddy with that was built by a very good builder and his kid got stuck and they got a suicide door lincoln <laughs> and that girl had a very really good built car and she got hung on the log so they got hung on the log and oh, she was that was that Rob Ostrander's kid? That was Rob yeah. Ostrander's kid. Taylor Ostrander. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Jamie, Bolt, Jamie Bolt's son put her on the log. Well, when he had done that, someone caught him in a corner and swung him around. So he stuck between her that's on the log, and the, he stuck between her and the log. So he couldn't get the caddy out because the caddy, it would have been a good battle between the caddy and the suicide and that 03 and up of um, the bald ones. They were three cars that were, you know, people, they were very well-built cars. I, w right. I wouldn't be afraid to take those cars anywhere. Yeah. But it's just the bad luck getting stuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so what's going through your mind as that played out? I mean, you, well, you've already been told you're underbuilt and you shouldn't be out there. And now <laughs> things are starting to fall. Yeah, I was, I was looking and, I, you know, I was trying to run with Taylor. And Taylor's down there messing with Jamie Bolt and I'm just down here. And I, I knew nobody in that heat besides Taylor and Jamie. And I was just messing around with everybody. And next thing I know, I'm looking and I'm like, oh my God, Taylor's hooked up. And Bolt's hooked up. And I'm like, oh no. Baldwin's so, hooked up. They were all hooked together. All I, I got really lucky that day. I was like, oh. And it came, came down to me and one other guy. And he got up against a log. And I just, I hit him a few times and he got stuck. He couldn't get out. So I got lucky that day. Yeah. How close is Whitneyville to Troy? Um, it's not far. I don't think no. it's far from there. Whitneyville is close to Mansfield. Marcella, does the dirt in Whitneyville solidify the concrete the way it does in Troy? Oh, my God. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> really, Chris? <laughs> hey, I didn't break it up. I hey, just, you know. That Impala was built by Aaron Bunce. I had nothing to do with it. Uh -huh. The way I bought it from Aaron Bunce is the way she ran it. Uh -huh. So. Oh, boy. That says a lot. All I did was add gas. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All I did was drive it. That's all you had to do, right? Yeah. That's all you got to do. Bring did you, did you ever hear that story? Have you mm -hmm. heard the story about the mud and the subframe of the Chrysler wagon? Mm -mm. So, like I said, your your grandparents and your dad, um, they ran them over. I mean, obviously you know that, and they ran a lot. And, um, you know, when, when you get beat a lot, you know, pe people always point fingers. They cheat, they cheat, they cheat, blah, blah, blah. So, of to course. the point where one time in Seneca County, Brett showed up with a wagon that had a baby bottle painted on the roof of it. No, that was mine. That was, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was mine. So, uh, I remember when it was over, the baby bottle wagon, whoever was driving it, jumped up on Butler Flannel shirt just so that it said Benjamin on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, obviously, you know, uh, pe people said that they cheated. And uh, one night we protested a car. You know, and uh, so we flip it up, or they flip it up, and me and a couple guys are looking, and I'm looking at stuff, and I'm going, man, we're going to look like assholes because I can't find anything. There's <laughs> no and I mean, like I said, at this point, I was straight knocking windows out, and that was the extent of my building. I, not that I do much more now, honestly, but so I'm, you know, I'm looking, and I'm like, Jesus, something's got to be wrong. And all of a sudden, I was looking at the frame, and I went, there ain't no holes in this frame anywhere. So I start looking and I said, something ain't right here. He says, Ben, Ben, <laughs> that's what he said. I said, uh, anybody got a screwdriver or something? So we start looking and sure enough, we find this stuff inside the frame. So, you know, they, they got disqualified. And uh, 
But then they came back Saturday night and won everything, so it didn't really matter. Was that was Wednesday. Saturday night. Cause I, thought, I thought it was a Wednesday. No, because I, I had won Wednesday with that wagon. Oh, okay. And then I brought it back Saturday, and my dad brought the New Yorker, because we had first and second. Yeah. And then my buddy, Jamie Johnston, ran the Monaco that I won the heat with, too, because I won with the Chrysler wagon and the Monaco. Yeah. And then, so they disqualified me for a loaded frame. Yeah. They disqualified my dad because they said he was hung up for, like, three minutes, but they let him run the whole feature anyway, so yeah. the win would have went to him. Yeah. So they disqualified him, so then they gave the win to my buddy anyways, which was my car anyhow, so... So after the fact, your dad assured us that that wasn't concrete. He bought that car from somebody in Troy, and it was so muddy that all the mud got into it, and yeah. it was solidified, and then painted itself black. But uh, did you believe it at the time? Oh, absolutely! I bought it all right the But uh, yeah, that was that was uh, again that was that was fun. But those were the days. Where was that at? It was Waterloo. The bad part was is I knew that they were you guys were gonna look at it because after well it was Steve Travis had that Monaco mm -hmm. seventy four Monaco I mean I was just going nose to nose yeah. and the wagon already had three or four runs on it and it still wasn't batting the front yeah. and Travis's Monaco the bumpers all the way back to the water pump and I'm like hey, man this ain't good and I kept trying to steer out of those hits because I didn't want it to look that obvious yeah. but <laughs> Give it away our dirty darkest secrets in here, huh? Oh no, I'm sure there's more than just what I know about. Nah, no, there's no more. So. <laughs> but no, it's been good that the whole family gets to run, you know. Like I said, my mom and dad had cars for years and I just I didn't have to you know, I didn't have to learn anything because my dad already was doing pretty good and just jumped in a car and go run, you know. Well, hang on. Wreck mean, stuff. And yeah. when I wasn't buying the stuff, I didn't care how bad I wrecked it. You know, it didn't matter. But no. you would always tell me, make sure you don't wreck this so bad so that we can run it again and again. I tell you not to beat up on my equipment. Yeah. That's what I tell you. Yeah, you're like, I was... She's at Whitneyville and wins the derby, and she's sitting there holding the brake, hammering on the gas while they're doing the countdown well, for the next car. Well, we don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so we go to Shemong, and she's got the headers glowing all the way. That old Chevy motor has never had the headers glow for... And that's... I had that in that wagon, that black wagon that I had at Waterloo in 91. Yeah. I still have that old 350 motor, yeah. and uh, all the years I've ran that, I've never made the headers claw. <laughs> At Shemong's, they were going from the manifold all the yeah. way to the flap, <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh my god, that old girl, they ain't never been beat like that. Well, when I'm competing against you, I really got to turn it up and show people that I'm better than you. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. She yeah. pinned me. When did your grandma and grandpa get out? They don't, they don't run anymore, right? Uh, my grandpa does, yep. I've ran yes. with my grandpa, what, last year? The last few years I've ran with yes. him. I, I was unfortunate. I, grandma got out of it right. quite a few Long years ago, ago. Yeah. so I have I didn't run with her. Well, she still gets to run with her mom, you know? Yeah. Yep. I never ran against Betty. I was never on the track at the same time as Betty that I can remember. Um, Mark and Harold, I, I actually have in my back pocket a win. A heat went over Harold at Waterloo. Remember, I had that, the other Imperial. It was imperial. Is that when he hit you in the driver's door? Yeah. Oh, that was bad. I was hot. Yeah, that was a heated conversation that day. But I, I, I will tell you this. This is the God's honest truth. Is I got out of the car. I was, and I was. I was, but I mean, I was young and dumb. So, I mean, I, I you know, hindsight, I should probably go apologize to Harold, really. <laughs> but That was a bad door shot, though. He shoved your door in. Yeah, like, he did. It was almost touching the steering wheel. But he hit me and spun me around. I ended up beating him, which was amazing. So, I went over and yelled at Harold, and then Mark came out, and Mark... I yelled at Mark, and Mark took it all and said, I was just going to tell you, good run. And I was like, that, and that, that took me from pure asshole to, like, feel like a real it asshole. It was a real run. I mean. And I was just like, oh, shit. Honestly, you know, that, that stuff like that is what led us being, you know, friends. It was it was a fun heat, though. I mean, we had a good time. It was, yeah. you know. But, I mean, that, that is, that's definitely, I mean, I would, I would put that heat win up against any feature one I've had. I mean, it was, it, it meant a lot to, to actually beat Harold on the track. It was never beat Mark, but it was, it was, uh, but I mean, Mark and I haven't run against each other in, God, 20 years. Long time. I think the last time you came to Waterloo, you brought that Lincoln and said you'd never run a Lincoln again as long as you live. I and I said I'd never run Waterloo again either after exactly. that night. I didn't come back. I been back, that's for sure. Was that after, that was after the pros versus Josie? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, oh, I did. Oh, yeah, I do remember that one. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh huh. So, pros versus jokes. Oh, here we go. I did, I, you know, finally they felt sorry for me. They put me in with pros. 
So I go to get my car and I sit down and my seat squishes. <laughs> it is 106 at Waterloo like it is. It's either thunder and lightning and torrential downpour or it's 106. 106. I sit down and my seat goes squish. <laughs> And from the first, I hear the squish, and then I hear somebody laughing four cars over, so loud that I could hear them. I said, "Okay, Mark, I'll remember that." And I haven't been in a derby he's ran sets, so sometime he's gonna sit in the car and this one goes squish. Wait, wasn't it you? I hit in the driver's door when we were on the team. Yeah, I think so. We come down the track and the steering broke on that old Buick, and it. I was like wide open and it's front wheel drive and when the steering broke and you yeah. stand on the grass it just turned me right right and I'm like oh no and I had no brakes from the start oh yeah you know the strut knocks the trunk open on the way out on the track remember yeah that was that was a lot of fun hey, he was but thanks for Jake Doyle in the minivan or we would have been watching we would have been losing oh yeah and the thing so, was is um, I thought it was down to Jake and I so I hit him about half track in the ass of that Astro van and then I was done, and then Jake's, you know, then this other car, the other Joe, or the Joe comes limping out, and I'm like, oh, God, if you lose this, we're going to look bad, but <laughs> thankfully Jake uh, took care of it. So, I mean, you've, you've had the chance, Marcelo, to, to travel around and see a bunch of different derbies in, in a bunch of different states and, and things like that, and you've heard the stories, and you've seen the videos and stuff. If, if the eras were different, and, mm -hmm. and Grandma and Grandpa, or, or even or even Dad, I'll give him a little bit of credit. Even Dad, as, as, as skilled a driver as he is, how would he handle himself, or how would your grandparents fare if they went someplace and got out and traveled a little bit, even if they just stayed regional, like someplace like a King's Old School show, or a Keystone Nationals show, something like that, or, or went into the super super deep water like Basher Cash? Um, honestly, I think that they would fare pretty good. You know, I've I've seen some of the videos of my grandma. My grandma was a smart driver, like you said. She was she kept her head. You know, that's something that I've learned from her was when you're out there you you really just gotta keep your head. You gotta you gotta predict every move and I, I feel like she would fare well. Grandpa on the other hand, he can get he can get a little crazy sometimes. Um Dad, Dad, you've ran you uh no, you haven't ran bash yet, no. You plan on it though. Um It'll be interesting to see how you do. I'm excited to, to watch that and go. That's a whole different league, though, than what we're used to yeah. building for. That's I've I've told Mark for I don't know. It, I've told Mark for years how good I thought he was, but since we've been traveling and doing this, I've told Mark that I think he could compete anywhere. I told him that him and Brett could go anywhere and mm -hmm. win, and I still feel that way. You know, Brett Brett is uh, Brett's. You know, he's run a, he he's run a lot more than Mark has over. You know, now I mean in the beginning, you know, Brett was or Mark was still making the. But Mark doesn't run like he used to. But I mean, I think Mark could go anywhere and compete. I mean, he's uh, he's that good of a driver. Um, in, in, in all honesty, I mean, the one thing that that worked against Mark back in the day was that he would get mad and then mm -hmm. you know he would he would ruin cars. But that hasn't happened. And not when you have to buy them yourself. Yeah, that hasn't happened in a long <laughs> time. Deal now. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I'm here to tell you, I I think Mark and, and Brett are definitely two of the guys that could go anywhere and compete top level absolutely I have no doubt has enough of that rubbed off on you to be able to do that and having been around demolition derby for so long and seeing those awful purses and the miserable situations that that your your dad and your grandparents have had to run in mm -hmm. are you able to appreciate the opportunities that are afforded to demolition derby drivers now absolutely you know um, it's a different game nowadays everything is different everything is so much more expensive and I I give it to my dad for you know getting me involved, and he's he's really been supportive through this whole thing. He's he's always bought my stuff, and you know he's really really been awesome. So Mark, what's it what's it like to watch your kid run? Oh, it was nerve wracking. Most of the time, though, I'm on the track with her. I mean, at Shimong we were the last two years. It's been well, me, me, her, and my fiance Carrie. It gets down to us three. Of course, Carrie's always the one that lays back and shuts off and lets me and Marcella play around for a while. <laughs> That's funny. So, so you said that you used to just go out and say, I, I want to run that one, uh, which is a little surprising to me because I, your dad always struck me as being more old school. You know, we hear these, these talks, these stories from second generation drivers who their, their parents or their grandparents or their uncles or whoever got them into the sport as a whole said, figure it out. If you got to run a hundred derbies to figure out how to do it, then you got to wreck a hundred cars to learn how to do something. But but you were able to to move into that. It's it's a it's almost a surprising 
angle to to the to the Benjamin legacy. And it, did you do the same thing with Marcella? Or you just don't even let her touch the tools. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> she doesn't do a whole lot. I mean, she, the stripping the cars and stuff, yes. But when it comes to tuning and you know rear end swaps and motor training swaps and wire, and I do all that. Yeah. You know, and hook you know, up shifters. I mean, that's that's one of those things. That, <clears> you know. And it's hilarious because, um, you know, for the longest time, people give me grief for my dad working on the cars. And I'm here to tell you, I do not know a better mechanic than my dad. I will put, up, put him up against anybody. And, like, people would give me grief for it. I'm like, so what you're saying is, A, you know, I shouldn't want to work with my father on a derby car. You know, I grew up watching him work, you know, race cars with my brother. And I shouldn't want him. Okay, that, that makes no sense. But we'll move on from there. Give your dad a socket of saws all of his 1946 welder in. You're set to go. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and that's the thing. Like, I'm just like, why would I not want my dad to check my stuff and make sure, you know, it's, and that's, you know, and honesty, I mean, you know, I don't know if it was jealousy or what it was, if it was just one of those things, but like, people would say that to me, and I'm just like, you know, it just, it's stupid. But I mean, you know, if, you know, and if, you know, now it's gotten kind of to the point where, you know, my son checks out my work to make sure it's right. So, you know, it's, it, it's pretty cool. Um, so, Mark, I mean, you've, you've, you've gone this gamut, this up and down, and now you're looking ahead to the, uh, uh, the, the run of Bash for Cash, but not to, not to be insulting about it, but, but the likelihood of, of getting to those, those upper echelons, are, those years are probably behind you in terms of your career. You're looking ahead. So, I mean, what are the, what are the long-term goals? You know, Marcelo, do you guys do you want to get to the point where you're working in the shop, where you're building the cars? Do you want to get to the point where you're running some of these I'm about done, shows? to be honest with you. I'm thinking I only want to run a couple times, maybe more at Bash or not. I, like, I haven't never ran there, but I would like to make a couple years go out there and run maybe the uh, pro stock class. I mean, I bought all the stuff to do that with this year. Right. I bought the coolers and everything, so. Sure. Um, and I have some nice 98 02s that I brought back from North Carolina, of course, from Nick. <laughs> uh, yeah. Nick and Jonathan Fair, yeah. you know. Um, what about what about your goals? Where do you want to get to the point where you're the one doing the building? You want to get to the point where you're traveling halfway across the country? Honestly, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I couldn't do it without him. You know, if we're we're like a team, I, I couldn't do it without you. Like, you know. It's just not the same without him. Here. I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Even traveling to the derbies, you know, we've always gone together. We've, we've, it's always just like we're a package deal, you know. That's what it should be. That's what it should be. The the demolition derby world is is built around that. A lot of people weighing in. Uh, Guy Raymond, Mark and Brett are what I drive to be. Uh, they may not be liked, but but they win a lot. Chris Leach is talking about uh, Southern Steel is is what it was. I wasn't loaded in case anybody's still debating <laughs> that. Made in that point, Scott Kiefer, uh, Benjamin family, fantastic family, uh, proud to be friends with and, and after derby days, uh, always great people. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of kind words coming in about the family and, and, and with those aspirations of getting there. You know, we look back on uh, what Brian was talking about with, with his dad and, and what you've got with your grandmother and grandfather and, and with your dad. And without Demolition Derby, do you think you'd still be able to have the same type of relationship with that that you've got now? Um, probably not, honestly. Like I think so. You think they'd, so? They'd be the deer blind. So I've seen videos of that too. You like that? Oh yeah, the deer. Yep. But yeah. Yeah. Real quick, have you ever heard the country song "Clean This Gun"? Mm-hmm. Yeah, every time I hear that song, I think of Mark. <laughs> 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 I would like to get a team a show sometime, even a compact team, like to get me, her, and Carrie on the same team. Um, I mean, Carrie, I'm really, I'm really impressed with Carrie's driving. Honestly, she does, she does a phenomenal job. Yeah, she. I've seen Carrie run, but I, I know she's. For a long she's got three or four wins at Shimon. Marcel's got two now. She's won the last two years. Yeah, yeah, mom's one of them. She she keeps her head too. Yep. I halfway through, I know I start getting hit left and right, and I'm like, oh man. This, I, I remember the time we were in a compact at the Black Rock show, and she kept turning sideways, and I kept getting drove in the passenger door. I said, next time you turn sideways, and I get dusted in the door, I'm punching you in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So stop turning sideways. <laughs> so I was getting blasted, man. The passenger door on that Luna was shoved all the way over. Well. 
there ain't much room in those cars for guys like me and Brian. No. You know? Do you, do you remember the hit with Cheyenne Chapman? I remember. Head on. Oh, man. That yeah, was... Chuck Chapman was in the passenger seat yelling, no, no, no. And she thought he was saying, go, go, go. So they're wide open, headlight to headlight. Yeah, yeah. Chapman's it don't take much to get that ready to hit stuff hard, though. Oh. Yeah, she actually, she, she was done after that. Her computer, her computer got busted. I don't know how Chuck did it. That guy would... He would build car after car after car, and he would show up at show after show after show. And mm -hmm. Drive hard. He had to work on those things day and night. Yeah. He was, Chuck was, I miss Chuck. Chuck was, yep. always, Chuck was he was fun guy. to watch on the track. Oh, yeah. Chuck was a great guy. Or is a great guy. He uh, always, you know, always talked to you. Always, always put on a show. Yep. Um, it was, it was fun, man. A lot of great times in the Derby stuff. Who would, who would ever thought? Well, you know, five years ago, I said, once my kid wins from One County Fair, <laughs> we are done. That's it. Mm -hmm. well, that didn't before. happen. <laughs> so now it's been my mom, my dad, my fiance Carrie, Marcella, myself, and my stepdaughter Maria. Has all won at Shamal. Here's a question for you: If you had to guess, how many wins between you, your mom, and your dad? I when I can guess. I don't know. I I would have no idea. I I, I told Chris I can't remember if it was on air or off air, but I remember one of the first times I came to your house. We were talking about trophies. Your dad's like, <laughs> your dad's like, I just filled up a van and took it to the scrapyard. Dodge yeah. caravan was full, right? Yeah. And Chris was like, he threw out trophies, and I'm like, there's another. There's no room. It wasn't a big deal. No big deal. You just didn't have room. Yeah, for we don't have any room. They're they're in our house. They're in our garage. Right, they're in our. Yeah. So I our, remember. Do you still have the two six foot trophies in your from? Uh, I do have those yeah. from Oigo. Uh, Oigo. Yeah. Yeah, they, they're in our living room. So there was a little bit of rivalry between Mark and some guys in Oigo, and. Uh, you went down there and won the, the fair. This is this is when it was the Brown brothers, Jesse Howe, Richie, Mark, Brett. I mean, it was the Christics. It was a hard hitting, not many rules, nasty show. So Mark goes out there where wins one year. And he sends out a Christmas card. And he's standing there with his arm around the trophy. <laughs> then he drove back. Did you win the next year? Or was a couple of years later. No, there was an October show. Won that? Oh, it came down to you and Frank Palmer, right? Was that no, the no, it, that was Palmer at. Whitney Point, oh, we got down to me and Frank. So then, Mark, the next year, Mark sends out a picture with him with his arm around two six foot trophies, Christmas yeah. cards. So that yeah, was, that was kid stuff. <laughs> that was that was an intense. You done with Jesse Howell a couple times. Jesse was he was he could have won. He got second to, in the October show. Yeah, Jesse was Jesse could have. But that one to happen without Brat. Brat shows up with something. I'm looking at that thing. He shows up with a seventy two Imperial. There's no hood, no fenders. All there is is a frame and an engine. Sticking out the front. <laughs> and I'm like, you talked me into coming down here and run with you? And you bring that shit? <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it, he says. Okay. <laughs> well, and I show up with a New Yorker. So the feature was, there had to have been six or seven Imperials in the feature and uh, two Chrysler wagons with Imperial subframes. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was getting into. And then Andy Brown shows up with an Oldsmobile, 98, and it gets down to me and him. Yeah. It's crazy. Those, those, those were the. I mean, there was, there was some intense. Whitney Point yeah. and Owego used to be just nasty, nasty yeah. shows. You, uh, you had to earn those ones for sure. There wasn't as many cars on the track, but the ones that were on, there was no junk down there. No, there's guys that break out the eighty eights from eighty or seventy eight. There was, it was all hard. I remember there. the time there was a house fire in Binghamton, and you see it on the news, and they're showing the house that burnt, and it shows a Chevy wagon sitting out back, and the quarter panels all brown from the fire. Jesse jumped right in his truck, found out where that fire was, ran right up there and bought the wagon like the very next morning. Oh my like, gosh. First, that was probably the nicest wagon I've ever seen, you know, it was that clean. You broke Guy Raymond's thumb? When? That's your mom. Last year. I didn't get involved in that. Mom? I looked down the track and saw them guys all after. Well, she started that all on her own. I don't remember. We went to Shemong in the compacts, me and her. She had a 97 Honda Accord. I had a 91 Honda Accord. And she's like, Dad, I just want to drive wide open. <laughs> okay. You drive wide open. But any enemies you make doing that, you're on your own. Oh, yeah, that was fun. I'm going out here to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was out there so to there win. Was, uh Montana from Bath, um, Guy Raymond, which we're running with Guy Raymond. She's out there dusting Montana, dusting Guy. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, the only guy, person by I don't way. think she hit was me. 
And I look down there, and Montana's got her in the corner, and somebody else is dusting her, and I was like, man, I stayed right on the other end. You stayed right away from me. I was me like, that I ain't even getting involved in that shit. I, I was just there to have fun, you know. He didn't care if I junked the thing. Dad's like, just junk it. I don't care. And I was out there. I was having a blast. Did you win? No. No, him. No. Like, I shut off no. for bumping a driver's door. I slid into a driver's yeah, door. that was... And Frank Roberts says to me after the derby, he says, uh, he says, well, that made the crowd happy by shutting me off. <laughs> Guy Raymond ended up winning. Well deserved, by the way. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I was out there. Um, I think I got what fourth, maybe. It just it blew um, it up. Yeah, I was. I was like trying to start it, and I had this push button that Grandpa wired up for me. He's like, "All right, you just push this button, and it'll start right up." And I'm pushing it, and I'm pushing it, and it's not starting. I'm like, "Grandpa." Because it's going clunk, clunk. <laughs> I was having That's such a good time. <laughs> Probably broke the can or the crank from hitting with the front end too much. Oh, yeah. The bumper was V'd. It was a, a Cordoba bumper. And it was V'd all the way back to where it was touching the oil filter. Another person that I want to bring up is Tabitha Rallier. You know, we grew up with, you know, our dads being really successful in the Derby. And we, we ran uh, quite a few times together. Um, I think Canna Sarega, like, we won... I got first, she got second, and then the next year she won, I got second, and it was just awesome to run with her. You know, we've always been great friends our entire lives. And she just pulled the car out of the weeds here well, yep. a month ago mm -hmm. and went somewhere and ran right down to the end. Yep. Yeah, where was that? I can't remember. I don't remember where she went. Yeah, because I remember talking to Brett about it. What's that? He said, she said she wanted to run. Oh, Skyline. Oh, no. Yeah. no. Pen Can. Pen Can, yep, yeah. yep. And, yeah, she uh, did good. Yeah, she ran right down to the end. She's, she's a good little driver too. She went. She was in. She went to Bash for Cash the one year with Don, Donnie Ren because Brett Brett Rant rode passenger once with somebody at Blackrock. He said it was the hardest <laughs> he ever got hit in his life. He wouldn't do it again. That was the funniest thing after. Yeah, that, that was my. That's the one you won. Yeah. And so Tabitha ran at Bash for Cash with Donnie, the, and she ended up second. She almost won the youth one of the times. We were she was second to the Wisman. Yeah, that was, I think that would have been the first year it moved to Chillicothe. Yeah, it could have been. But, yeah, she's, she's definitely... I think Brett know. rode with Clay French, I think it was. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Yes. I just know Brett said yeah. it was And on the way out there, Brett says, do you want to win? Or do you want a trophy? Or do you just want junk stuff? He says, no, I want a trophy. Brett's like, all right, do as I say. <laughs> okay. He goes out there and he doesn't do Brett what he says. Brett said, I tell him back off the line, drive down there to the corner. He said, yeah, he drives down there to the corner at 40 miles an hour, hits the guy right in the ass, he says. Yeah, Before he, I know it, he's got it in reverse. <laughs> so, he says, so we hit the car backwards, three quarters of the track. Brett said, come upside down in the back seat because the seat broke. <laughs> and yeah. I said to Brett after the derby, I says, yo, because Brett called you up catch a fire. Yeah. Or, uh, well, Clay did. Yeah. I said to Brett, I said, uh, I thought you guys were running with Jake Doyle and them with his kid. We was. I said, well, then he, they back right over your hood. He says, good, I'm going to thank him. He says, shake his hand. He says, then he put us out. He said, I wanted out of that thing. He was all busted up in the back and his ribs. And yeah, he Brett, never got in another compact. No, never. Yeah, he, he didn't he cut his hand during that yeah. heat, too? Yeah, his back, a big yeah. cut in his back where his seat broke. And he just showed up, and the kid, that Clay wanted somebody to ride with him. Yeah. You know, so Press is all right, I'll ride with him, you know. Oh. No seat bar, no nothing. That's one thing I would never do. It's, Brett's, Brett's asked me, do you want to run a, do you want to run a, like a two man extreme together? And I'm like, no. He's like, he's like, I'll let you run the pedals. And I'm like, or first you want to run the pedals. And I'm like, <laughs> no. He's like, he's like, okay. He goes, you run, you run the pedals, and I'll steer. And I'm like, no, because I'll screw something up. We won't win. I'm like, I would be the guy that ran with with, with Brett Rally and still couldn't win. He just laughed. I still won't run them. Might be White's decision. Yeah, I still know what Brett's got in up here. Crazy. <laughs> but yeah, they, they saw it this year down at uh, Keystone Nationals, and he, he, uh, he definitely does and has not forgotten what that ski at all is when he wants to use it. He was supposed to show up tonight, but I don't know where he's at. I'll get on the bottom when he got here. We got the, get Will you? I'll tell you why he's here when we're off the air. Oh, or why he's not I'm here, I'll say. Okay. Uh, let's see. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, can I go get out of this for <laughs> get out of this for a second. Smashing Down Mission Derby season has come to a close. I want to extend their most sincere thanks to everybody online, SmashingDerby.com, for the 2021 schedule as it comes together. You can find out more details there. Many thanks to everyone who supported Smashing Down Mission Derby through a challenging and unprecedented season. We cannot do this, do this without the support of the drivers, fans, fair boards, partners, year after year. With all sincerity, we. Thank you. The last event of the season uh, for the 527 Unified Point Series is coming out November 28th and 29th. That is Coke Promotions Turkey Derby. It's going to be in Portland, Indiana. At this point, John Shipley on the heels of 11 wins, 10 wins, something crazy like that. 11 teams. He's, he's, he's got the points lead, but Don Santel has been able to run him down. 100 points now for Santel. Six point difference going into the finale. Jimmy Riley in the third spot. Matt Wingrove, Travis Panic back there through the top five. You can stay up to date online at 527unifiedseries.com. Jeffy's Fab Farm, longtime friend of the show, been expanding exponentially across uh, North America. I mean, we can't just say the United States anymore because he's he's got branches all over the place. The whole thing started up in Canada, basically just wanted to make some sacks for some buddies. And uh, now he's got a whole empire online, jeffysfabfarm.com. Check out the virtual store. In order now, Jeffy's Fab Farm is recognized as an industry leader in all manner of fabrication needs. Jeffy's Fab Farm is a national go-to for a number of demolition derby parts. They are known for the Ellis conversion components, but earned major derby cred with their various header offerings. This summer, they released a solid four-cylinder Camry engine mount and also headers for the Hyundai Elantra engine, uh, the 1.8 and 2.0 displacement power plants. The store offers bumper to bumper selection, including fuel and air parts, suspension and transmission items, steering components, pedals, shifters, switches and gauges. If you need it, you can find it on the farm. Smith Metal Works, the, uh, you got the super stock bumper? Is that what you ended up getting? The the, you got the point? Mm -hmm. Well, they have, they have something for everybody. SmithMetalWorks.info, experience and passion, the second to none, an all-purpose fabrication shop that is taken the Northeast by Storm Smith Metal Works. Features more than 40 years of combined metalworking experience. The hallmark of the product line is that pointed and the flat bumpers, both of them replicating popular factory releases. And of course, they've got that super stock release that can be run stuffed or ran hollow. There's also a compact version of the pointed bumper. Other items include the Crown Vic door skins, battery boxes, engine mounting systems, pedal combos, and shifters. The shop offers all the odds and ends, such as distributor clamps and welding centers. Be sure to ask about the GM floor liners online, Smith Metalworks. Dot info Blizzard Bash 2.0 is coming around the corner for uh, March of uh, 2021. That's going to be paired with um, uh, Capital City Carnage. So we've got that to look forward to. The top of the year we have already lost in 2021 uh, Napa Winter Slam. That's going to be off the, the schedule for this year. Just want to remind everybody you know, before we get into the, the final stanza here of this edition of the Crash Course. Once again, online, the Realistic Derby Project putting together the uh, Suicide Awareness Fundraiser. Jump online, you can PayPal any donations to Jesse Myers94 at yahoo.com. We have the links and information attached in the show posts on the Facebook page. Make sure you jump on there. Um, show them a little bit of appreciation. I know they will, uh, they will appreciate it there. There's all sorts of, of, of whispering in the back of the class. Anything that you'd like to share with the rest of us? I'll take that as a no. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's going to allow something to King's Old School, but I didn't hear what it was. We're going to allow the uh, the Smith Metalworks bolting cradle. Um, it'll be in the rules here right shortly for the King's Old School show. Mm -hmm. um, you'll still have to leave the uh, rack and pinion steering and the aluminum cradle, so it's just going to be the, I think it's, I believe it's six bolts that hold that cradle in. Cool. Um, Hopefully we can run that show next year. <laughs> Where's that show supposed to be at this point? Um, as of right now, I believe it's still going to be at Hemlock. Yeah. Well, yes. Remains to be seen. I mean, there's so much stuff that, that still has to be planned and put together. Right. Um, uh, so, it, Bash for Cash 2021, is that the plan, or are we looking further ahead for... No, it'll probably be 22. Only because, the, like... Two of my good motors are already in cars for local shows, mm -hmm. and I don't want to tear another one. No, it's only money. I don't want to tear to and buy another motor. Tear those cars apart for a July show to go in May, right? And being they got canceled this year, we didn't get to wreck them anywhere. So we sure. got two cars at the house that are done. Gotcha. Uh, what are we planning on running those at? I don't know yet. 
<laughs> Where you want to run the Marcella? Mm, somewhere other than our hometown fair, honestly. It won't be our hometown fair. We will never run there again. Are you sad to hear that? <laughs> Take it or leave it. Oh, well, yeah. I don't think they're going to have V8s there anymore anyways, honestly. Great to know, guys. Yep. That's, what, that's how I, I I truly believe that that's what's going to be. I see. Let's see. Right. What's going on, Chris? Uh, just double checking everything, making sure that everything is still on its feet. Cool. So we had some trouble. Yeah, we had some trouble getting. We have a, a sweet new microphone over here that uh, I don't know. It wasn't working very well. We had Kyle on the phone. And I was fiddling with that quite a bit and trying to decide if I wanted to yeah, no, hold it up here, but if I hold it up here, then you can't hear anything if, if, if I'm not talking. to show me all the technical stuff. Yeah, it is what it is. It happens every now and again. Brian um, needs to build a 98 to 02. Never going to happen. Way too much work. They're not. Way too much work. I like my caddies. <laughs> I'll tell you, I just bought a set of the brackets, the ZTR brackets from Toast. He does nice work. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. The he does. I, I bought the whole set up the uppers, the lowers with the trail and arms and Yeah. He's yeah. got a he's got a kit that you can put a Chevy run in the Cadillac as well. Yep. I'll talk about one of those, but I would recommend his work any day. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's everything he does is really nice guy to talk to on the phone. Yeah. 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 Toast is a good dude. Mm -hmm. We've talked to him a few yeah. times on here and yep. he's his his work is impeccable. What do you think, Chris Marquardt? Where are you planning on running next year? Hmm. <laughs> Wherever. <laughs> Wherever you get told. Pretty much, yeah. 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 Right. Is there anybody that you guys want to make mention of here before we get out of here? I would just like to thank my whole family for allowing me to spend the time in the garage that I do, messing with this stuff and traveling to get cars and the money that I spend on this sport. And I mean, I just, you know, just taking money and throwing it away like that. I just put a 35 spine rear together and you know it's, it's not nothing to dump two thousand dollars in a rear end you know it's yeah, they're not cheap. you know taking time away for carry and marcella and then you know my, my thank my parents for bringing me into this sport i mean that is true it was easy for me to to get started because I mean, my dad had the junkyard and it was just always cars he'd squall back and say yeah, I want that one. and he never told me no Right. Never told me no. If I wanted to wreck something, I just got the racket. Mm -hmm. So, first and foremost, I'd like to thank my dad. You know, he's always been there, my number one supporter, my number one fan. My mom, my grandma, my grandpa, um, my sisters—they've been really supportive of me. Um, Brett, Brett, and Tabby, and Melanie, and just everyone. They're, everyone's just great, you know. Did you have any choice to get into English and everything? Like, did you play other sports when you were in high school? Yeah, yep. I was on the swim team. Um, that took up a lot of my time. Um, you know, I, I wanted to do it. As soon as I became of age, I was like, I, I want to do this. This is what I want to do. And I was good at it, so. Yeah, but was it like eighth grade, they bumped her right to the 500 because they had a girl drop out with something. So they, yeah, the they bumped her right up to the 500. Which is 20 yeah. laps, yeah. It's <laughs> down and back, you know, down and back. She's only an eighth grader, and she's swim, swimming with the varsity. Yeah. I mean, she wasn't winning, but she wasn't finishing last either. But they needed a person, so they, I'm thinking, man, 500 I could, yards. I could doggy paddle for 20 laps. No, you couldn't. Hell, I have a hard time. I have a hard time walking 500 yards. <laughs> <laughs> That's why don't swim. That's why you got that, that rifle that reaches out there. And yeah. Four to go get them, and yeah. you do much of that walking. I don't know. Have, she's probably gonna be using that the first day this year. Well, you know, I'll have to go back to the old one. Yeah, hunting. I'm I'm more towards hunting. Honestly, hunting's really my my thing. And I love to hunt. It's just she just don't thing. like to get up in the morning. Yeah, I got an 18 year old, 17 year old doesn't like to get up in the morning either. So get all my stuff ready, Dad. All right, it's all ready, right here. You getting up? Uh, I'm gonna go this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> going on your own because I'm not coming back. <laughs> yep. So. Awesome. But yeah, hopefully this COVID gets over and we can do something next year. I mean, I hope so. It's crazy. I'm ready for some normalcy. It, it would be nice. But, uh, 2020 has really sucked if you think about it. It was. It, uh, it, 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 it just sucked. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it got a whole lot like worse on the third. 
it, it looked like it was going to get a whole lot worse for uh, uh, for the Smashing family. Oh yeah, we got to bring that Daddy, up. Daddy, uh, uh, Daddy Clark, thankfully um, surviving a heart attack over the weekend. A couple blockages in his in his ticker, and he was in ICU. Um, he's okay. I got a thumbs up from when I messaged him. That was I, I, as far I, as I got. I saw the. I well earlier in the day I saw something about prayers for my cousin, and and Fanny was tagged in it. I'm like, that's weird. Well, then Tim put the put it out there. He, Tim's the one that said, "Hey, this is what happened. You know, we can use your prayers." Um, so then I, you know, I offered my my thoughts. And later on, Fanny showed up on Messenger. I'm like, "Dude, what are you doing?" I'm, I'm doing all right. And I'm like, "Holy cow!" We talked back and forth a little bit, but I'm telling you, man, that's that, that stuff is scary. It's, it's uh, scary. I was hoping Tim would get his show in this year. Yeah. You're not the only one. <laughs> yeah, we uh, plan on having Kings of Old School at in Cobble Scale, and that got canceled. That was a real bummer. We were really looking forward to that. I think we all were work. working. Yeah, we. that's really um, thankful to be a part of that. That's That's gotten huge over the last few years, and we've been doing that for what, like, how many years now? Five. Five years. Yeah, that's that's I'll getting. The first one. But no, yeah, she wouldn't get to run. run. I wouldn't let her run it. Let her run. I wouldn't let. No, I wouldn't let anybody family, immediate family, run a show that I'm a part of. Oh, that's understandable. Yeah. I like it. Good move. Very understandable. Man, it's not that I know that. I would let anything because the inspection would be exactly the same for it. Wouldn't matter who it is. It'd be harder on her. I <laughs> just. Would yeah, you know, you're going to be, be that person that's going to oh, think. Absolutely. Would it be weird to have a loaded car you built? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ask Brad. Like a raffle car. <laughs> he puts door bars in, and they have to be five inches off the floor, and they were like three inches off the floor because he brought them down on an angle. Yeah. And he's wait, a minute, wait a minute. Brett didn't bring them out. Whoever built it in Brett's shop brought them down. <laughs> well, whatever. Brett didn't bring them down. But they were too close to the floor. That was on the raffle car. And he's like, are you really going to make me cut those? He says, oh, they're, they're three inches. I don't care if they're three inches. We're going to cut them. Yeah, I think. Um, well, he is a cotton. <laughs> it's really important to be fair with everybody, no matter who you are. You have to be fair. And that's something that Kings of Old School is known for, is being fair. And I think that's really awesome. For sure. I, I'll tell you what, the, the first one we went to, the first Kings of Old School, I went over and I had a tiny cut list, I, you know, nothing major. And uh, one of the things I had to do is I'd, I'd put tack welds on the top of my trunk, and then I'd also chain And Mark said, well, you got to have one or the other. And I said, all right, no big deal. There's was the, the that was the stupidest rule I had in that in there. He came over afterwards. He's like, hey, I apologize. You can leave those. I'm like, yeah, it's too late. And I'm, and I've never had an inspector do that. He's like, yeah, you, you can leave those if you want. If you want to touch them, I'm like, nah, it's fine. Not a big deal. It's, you know, I mean, that's that. You know, I thought that was, I was very impressed with the head inspector doing that. So, but what do you think, Chris Marquardt? Well, we're just about done. Covered almost all of our bases. One final thing to get to tonight, real quick. Uh, Friday, you will be able to see a cross promoted show. Blizzard Bash is still happening. Friday night, RDP is hosting a 12 team tournament, Blizzard Bash, in a fully modded Stormont Vale Event Center. Nice. It's amazing. The pictures that I've seen, uh, we're going to be doing the play-by-play -play on it. It'll be cross-promoted on the Crash Course page. So if you're looking for something to do on a Friday, I don't, I don't know if there's any live derbies happening this weekend, but you can always ch tune in. Check that stuff out. Looking forward to uh, getting in there and doing that. I was working on graphics today. Um, today was a... Uh, I'm glad I got the graphics done this morning because this afternoon uh, I had my observation at school. And, and uh, well, I, I shouldn't have picked a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> After recess Ooh. to do math. Exactly. <laughs> it did not go well. No, I have to be at school <coughs> at eight o'clock tomorrow morning to go over it. Mm. So I am I am looking forward to uh, getting home and promptly forgetting anything that has to do with that observation. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nonetheless, um, appreciate all the all the turnout tonight. We went over a little bit, but I don't think that's too big of a deal. I think everybody hung out in there. Uh, Urban, Ohio does have a derby. The Saturday <coughs> block start time there. Um, so if you're looking for something to do, you can check out the Derby in Urbana. That is going to do it for us here on this edition of the Crash Course, wrapping it up here at the North Park Building at Academy Square. Thanks for watching. We'll see everybody next time.
Crash Course Live is presented by Smash It Demolition Derby, who hosts Bash for Cash, Blizzard Bash, and Capital City Carnage. Online at smashitderby.com. And Stirring Dirt Racing, host of May Mania's team show at the Golden Spike Arena in Ogden, Utah. Online at stirringdirtracing.com. Reckless Abandoned Derby Apparel and Derby Inc. Magazine. This is the Crash Course Demolition Derby Podcast, recorded live at the FigureLinks1.com studios in downtown Seneca Falls, New York. <laughs>